Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Morning, everybody. You know what? I'm starting off with this picture because I have a neighbor who has chickens and she goes, look, I've got farm fresh eggs for you. And she gave them to me and I, I was went to put them in the fridge and she goes, you don't put them in the refrigerator. They're not refrigerated. I've never had eggs before that have not been in the refrigerator. It's a little odd to me, but um, okay, we'll try them. We'll see <laughs> how I like them. So we're starting off this morning for uh, the new cipher is above the ceremonial sentry boxes at the Tower of London, looking good. I got this picture above from somebody. This is from uh, the Queen's coronation. It's a shot glass and a tankard, I think you call that. And a different subscriber sent me a picture of her tiara. She is also ready for the coronation. Love it. All right, we have a lot to cover. The royals have really been busy this, this week. Let's go. We are starting off with the Duchess of Gloucester today, who went to the Isle of Wight to officially open a new ambulance station. She also took a tour of the facility and, of course, unveiled a plaque. Very nice. We're going to move on to Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, who did investitures at Buckingham Palace. And one of the people that she uh, presented an MBE for services to entertainment is broadcaster Frank Skinner. Very nice. Congratulations. Sticking with Princess Anne, she officially opened the Thomas Telford Corpac Marina, I hope I'm saying that right, on April 18th, and she toured the new state-of-the-art marina facilities. For me, she always looks so stylish, and yet you can tell she's all about business. You guys know where I'm going with that, right? She's professional. That's the word. She's professional. All right, moving on. Next up, we have Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh. She went to an agricultural show located in Ipswich today. It was at Trinity Park, and she's a patron of the Association of Show and Agricultural Organizations. Sophie spoke with a lot of the school children. Um, the children were learning what animals eat. Then um, she was taken over to a different section where she saw a, a beekeeper. Apparently, she took particular interest in the beekeeper display. I, wow, I wouldn't go anywhere near that, but okay. She also went outside and admired some of the foreign animals. Agriculture, according to this article, is one of the big things that Sophie is passionate about. All right, moving on. Moving on to the coronation, apparently King Charles is going to be having three garden parties with thousands of guests. The first two parties will be held in the gardens of Buckingham Palace. That's going to be on May 3rd, which is three days before the ceremony, and then May 9th, which is three days after the ceremony. And then a third uh, garden party will be held at the Palace of Holyrood. Now, it is being reported that these parties are a staple of the royal calendar. It's just that this is the first time it's being done with Charles as the king. I think that's lovely. All right, moving on. Moving on, Weatherspoons uh, has confirmed apparently they have 844 pubs and in honor of King Charles's coronation, you can do that at Weatherspoons. You can celebrate it there for an extra hour. It's going to remain open an hour longer on Sunday, May 7th to mark the occasion. How nice is that? Now they're able to do this because extended licensing hours just happened and the home secretary said, quote, it was to allow people to enjoy an extra pint or two. I'm pretty sure that they will. Wonderful. Lots of pub change they said have announced that they're going to extend their operating hours. Lovely. All right, this next article, depending on which way you look at it, Miss Pamela Hicks, she's one of the last two surviving bridesmaids from the Queen. She was not invited to the coronation. Now, she has said that she's not offended at all to miss out 
even though she served as the queen's bridesmaid and lady in waiting. Now, the king did make a personal apology to her for not giving her an invitation. She is 94 years old. The family actually got a phone call from Buckingham Palace saying that the guest list had been slimmed down. Again, slimmed down coronation and so to help reduce costs, that's why she was out. Now, India Hicks, who is her daughter, who was in Diana's um, wedding, said that um, one of the king's personal secretaries passed on the king and he said it was um, love and apologies and they are okay with it. Then, and Miss Hicks apparently said that it was, and I'm quoting, very, very sensible. Invitations were based on uh, merit, not on the arist uh, aristocracy. I'm not saying that right, but you know what I'm saying. All right, moving on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're on to the Prince and Princess of Wales, Catherine and William. They took a train today to Birmingham to, quote, celebrate the city's rich heritage and culture and meet future creative leaders. Of course, Catherine looked absolutely gorgeous. This town that they went to apparently has a rich Asian heritage and a lot of talent in the creative industries. At least that's what it says. Now, one of the first places they went to was an Indian street food outlet that started as a food stall before the restaurant opened in 2017. It's run by the Sharma family, which is really cool. They serve Indian food, British Asian fusion cuisine, and of course, the Sharma family has some of their own favorite dishes that they serve. Now, they were cracking up because apparently... Somebody called up to make reservations uh, for the restaurant. William grabbed the phone and um, said, gee, I hope I told them the right place to go. <laughs> like, it was unbelievable. It was hilarious. Um, but it, it was all caught on camera. I wish I could show you the video. There's a video. You guys can Google it and look for it. It, it was absolutely hilarious. Now, this restaurant is home to an all-female chef team who serve up all of this food. So Catherine and William met the staff, met the family, heard about how the restaurant came to be, and then spoke with former university students who trained in their kitchen. They also tried, William and Catherine did, to make their own Indian treats. It apparently didn't go well. Now, the couple, as you see above, who made the reservation said they had no clue that it was William on the phone. And the owners of the restaurant that you're seeing above said that William did such a good job, they would hire him in a second and give him a job there. Crazy. All right. After they were done at the Indian restaurant, Catherine and William went to a place called the Jewelry Quarter. It's well known for um, the businesses. It's, it's a venue. And they have creative industries from gaming to filmmaking. Very interesting. They were at a place that's called the Rectory. So they went around and they spoke with designers, playwrights, some artists. They heard about how the sector is growing. And then they went out to meet the public. That, I think had to have been the highlight. William and Catherine were allowing selfies. People were screaming through the crowds. We love you, William. We love you, Catherine. It was really adorable, like amazing. Of course, Catherine was handed lots of bouquets of flowers. And of course, as we know, they always gravitate towards the babies. Now, we know that Catherine gravitates towards them, but here's the shocker. William was gravitating towards them too. No, there will be no more children. I'm pretty sure they're done, but that doesn't mean they she doesn't still get broody and want another baby. Anyway, they finished their walkabout. Catherine looked lovely. This dress she was in was really looked good on her, and I like the color. Now, now they were making their way after the rectory over to the cellar bar. And while they were there, the two of them decided to try their hand at darts. 
and uh, apparently Williams tumbled to the floor and Catherine was praised for her solid work in dart throwing. Now you guys will love this. There's a woman named Alison Hammond who's been dubbed the Queen of Birmingham and apparently as Williams' uh, dart went to the floor, she let out, oh my gosh, her trademark laugh. And then she later on said, and I'm quoting, this is the best day of my life. Yes, William got ribbed. Now, I wanted to say that I love this picture that was taken. And in case you don't see it, let me zoom in for you. Yep, that's William's got his hand on Catherine's waist. Ah, <sighs> just love that. Now, for those of you who are wondering about this absolutely gorgeous outfit that Catherine is wearing, it was 183 pounds from Karen Milner. Uh, it's my understanding it's sold out already, but of course, Remulade Sauce on Twitter put this up. Everything she had on was a rewear except for the actual dress. Her, ju her jewelry, her shoes, everything was a real wear, a rewear. Why can't I say that? A rewear. Yes, the trip was a, a, a base success. Now let's move on. Now, moving on to Harry and Meghan, we already know that there were a lot of demands met and none of them were achieved, but it looks like there were seven specific demands that we're going to look at. Here we go. Demand number one was a sit down face to face with King Charles, which of course wasn't going to happen. So that demand was unmet. And demand number two was a sit down face to face with William. That didn't happen either. Now, demand number three was this, this toxic atmosphere, all of the tension in the family had to be stopped. He wanted a warm welcome. This just shows how out of touch with reality he is since he's the one who's created all the tension. That's right. So essentially, he wanted King Charles to control everybody else in the family and tell them to be nice to him, which wasn't going to happen. Demand number four was that Megan get an invitation to the coronation, which she got, but she then had demands of her own about the kids. Now, demand number five was the kids were not invited. And they're saying that that's never been an issue because small children don't go to royal events of this scale because they could become restless. They could throw a temper tantrum. But yet he wanted a recognition or a celebration on the day of the coronation to be factored in for a four-year-old's birthday party. And they said no. Number six was Harry was concerned about his security. Now, this is really a joke because he'd already been told that when he goes to events with the royal family, he's going to have police protection. However, if he leaves Frogmore to go do his own thing, then he has to provide his own protection. So the head of the police even said, you know, he'll be protected when attending the main events, but if he does anything else, he'll have to pay for his own security. And the final request, of course, is they wanted back on that balcony with the kids to have a family moment. The same family they've been crapping on for the last however long. And of course, that was denied as well. And that's why even though Megan got her invitation, she decided to say no thank you because they didn't get anything else that they wanted. Hmm. I mean, you can't crap on the family for two years in the cut and the spare and Oprah and, you know, all of this stuff and then expect to make demands. Now, I should tell you that people are saying that uh, Harry should be banned from wearing ceremonial robes. He should not be wearing a regalia or coronet. He should just be wearing a morning suit. I agree. And I have to be honest, I agree with this article also that there's no way back for them. They caused so much damage. You can never undo everything that they've done. It's just not really possible. So while Megan may want to backtrack on things, it's a little too late. All right, you guys, a blind item came out saying that um, supposedly Megan Markle was invited to a birthday party of a preschooler, <laughs> but she was hoping for connections. So she went. That's crazy. All right. Last thing I want to touch on is what Megan's mole put up on Twitter. She's right. The pictures are Harry before he met Megan and after he was married to Megan. She pointed out, rightfully so, that marrying the wrong woman will ruin you, but the right woman could elevate you. Choose wisely. 
Yep. Now, a lot of people have said that they heard I was in an accident or they'd never heard I was in an accident, but I put a little video piece up about it, wow, a, a year and something ago. And so I decided just to snip that part out of the video so that I could bring you guys up to speed. So you can watch it, not watch it. Warning, some of the pictures are graphic. Here we go. And, um, people keep wondering what I look like. And so I just want to give you guys a little background. Not that it's going to matter to the Sussex squad. They'll still make fun of the way I look. They make fun of everybody. But I wanted to give you guys a little background before you see what I actually look like. So here we go. So this is me uh, in this picture. Um, yeah, before my accident. I was three weeks to my 21st birthday. I thought I looked pretty good. <laughs> typical 80s photo. I tried to get the shiny, you know, the, the glare off the photo and I couldn't, so you'll just have to ignore it. But anyway, that's what I looked like. On March 12th of 1987, I was headed back to work and I was behind a tractor trailer truck. There were two lanes going in each direction with a cement wall in the middle. So I'm in the left-hand lane next to the cement wall and there was an elderly woman with Alzheimer's on the wrong side of the highway going the wrong way. The truck saw her and swerved out of the way just in time to leave me wide open. There were no screech marks on the road. They said I never even had a chance to hit my brakes from the time I saw her until impact, they said, was about two seconds. And she rammed into my car. She was killed and I was critically injured. It took them quite some time to extract me from the vehicle. Now the car was a total loss, obviously. One of the things about the car, this was a 280ZX, and one of the things about the car is that it has a super long hood, which you can't really tell in this picture, but it had a super long hood, and that's one of the things that helped me because the lady, when she hit me, her engine actually went through the firewall and landed on her in the car. So anyway, I'm laying in this car, I'm critically injured, I'm bleeding out, I have injuries that you just cannot even begin to imagine and um it was not a good thing now you're able to see in some of these pictures this is back before airbags this is back before safety glass and um, my car was doing 60 and her car was doing 60 so that's like hitting a brick wall doing 120 miles an hour and human bodies just are not meant uh for that kind of speed anyway I'm critically injured and they carted me off to the hospital. By the time they extracted from the, me from the vehicle, I had almost no blood pressure. I broke both of my knees as well as lacking them open because I'm so tall, which in some ways is lucky because my legs took the brunt of the impact, except of course for my face and head. If you look carefully, you can see the burn across my chest from the seatbelt. The black eyes, believe it or not, were caused by the brain bleed. It's called a subdural hematoma. I also had a myocardial injury, which is another way of saying I bruised my heart, which is what happens when you slam into the steering wheel and take it all the way over with your chest. I had broken ribs, uh, my right hand, the thumb was an open green stick comminuted fracture, which is another way of saying the, the bones were pushed together and pulled apart and the bone was actually sticking out through the skin. Obviously, I took a massive blow to the face. That's a through and through wound on my chin, by the way. Um, and it took out my teeth, uh, broke my nose. I mean, the list of injuries just goes on and on and on. It was, it, like I said, it was a horrible accident. I was lucky to survive the accident and even make it to the hospital. Now, as if this all wasn't bad enough, a passerby stopped to quote unquote help. She went to the dead woman's car, took her money, took some of the jewelry, came to my car, saw that I was still alive, hanging on, grabbed my purse, walked away and started cashing checks all over town. That's a crappy thing to do. But besides that, it created a problem because I was unconscious when they pulled me from my car and the car I had just purchased was still registered to the original owner. Therefore, I was Jane Doe. You know, you can't just take people's ID, but she did. They found her, by the way. She never apologized, by the way, for what she did, and I never got my stuff back. She said she burned it. Okay, whatever. Anyway, this is what made me decide to want to go into nursing, and so I've been helping others. I figured, you know, this is a really good thing, <clears throat> the way people helped me, and I'm going to help others. So that would be why 
I haven't really shown my face. I've had a lot of corrective work. Um, but and even 30 something years later, it's, you know, it is what it is. All right, you guys, you know the drill. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified of uploads. If you've already hit the button, double check and make sure that you are still subscribed to my channel. Don't forget to leave those comments below. Make them good. Don't forget to go up into my description box and you'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email. For those of you who've donated money through the coffee fund or through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.